Come on. Let's go. A brisk morning walk with a difference. Come on. Deputy Let's Governor go. Debbie Whittingham and all the staff at the Tower of London don't just work here, it's also their home. Debbie lives in the Bywood Tower, which dates from the 13th century and is now the main entrance for the 2.8 million visitors who come here each year. Well, welcome to the Bywood, Rosie. Through this rather ancient door, if I can press it, I'll take you into my, uh, my apartment, which I have the privilege to live in. Yeah. This is quite our, a place. It is. This is our living room, um, which um, is has its own quirky bits to it. I have a, a cell door there that the cell in there used to house the last prisoner that was um, executed on Tower Hill. As well as all the history, Debbie gets a front row seat for the everyday pomp and ceremony of one of London's premier landmarks. The privilege of being this high, I get to see the uh, opening ceremony and the closing ceremony every day, if I wish. And do you get used to that? I mean, that's so special. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is very special. In fact, you take it for granted after a while. And um, I, you know, I don't. I just forget sometimes that it's going on. I go to go out to the office, think, ah, wait a moment, opening ceremony. So uh, check it out and then then leave. You start to live and be part of the fabric of the tower, and and it, you have a, a very sort of an emotional attachment to it. I remember talking to uh, the governor about this and in the services you have an attachment to your regiment or your service and you feel it's more of a vocation and it's part of who you are. There aren't many jobs when you leave the service that you'd find that again, but here you do. And you start to feel that you, you get a, a kind of a love for it. And I, and I know I've only been here since March, but that's building every day. Derby served 31 years in the Royal Navy, joining as a radar operator in 1986 and working in operational support, officer training and defence intelligence. I'm a farmer's daughter from Cheshire and the last thing that I ever thought I'd do would join the Royal Navy, but I did. Um, we just happened to have a careers convention at my school and I met a Wrens officer who told me that I could do all sorts of wonderful things, particularly being a PT instructor, which is what I wanted to do. Um, and I thought, OK, well, we'll go for that. So I joined up in January 1981 as a REN radar because you couldn't join to be a PTI. They said you have to do some time in a different branch first. So I joined as a REN radar. I never did become a PTI because I was commissioned in 1986 to be a REN's officer. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I just come in to check that we're all ready to go. Yes, we are. Marvellous, you're looking, you're all looking splendid and gorgeous. As well as her ceremonial role, the Deputy Governor is also Head of Operations and Security. That means the Tower's Beefeaters are under her command. Yeah, I mean, they are a wonderful bunch, absolutely wonderful. Um, we have 37 and there we have two ladies, um, but... They're a really good group, and um, they're all from different backgrounds. We have Army, Navy, Air Force, Royal Marines, and, and we're all part of a big family because we all live here. Um, so the banter's good, um, you know, but they're also extremely professional, and, you know, when you need something doing, it gets done. Okay, thanks, Amanda. You're very welcome. See you later. And they're very efficient, and, and they've, they've been very, very welcoming and they've made me feel very very welcome and looked after me and educated me on the ways of the tower. They held a thousand soldiers of the Royal Guard. Traditionally the Tower of London has been an all-male bastion so how do the yeoman warders and Debbie's other staff react to a woman? Um, I haven't, haven't found any problems with that at all. I think because of my experience in the military um, it's just the day to day. I, there's a style of leadership that I have that I haven't changed because I've come here. It's the same as I have worked in my life as an officer in the Navy. My last position in the Navy was a senior position, and I'm just me. Um, and I don't find that I have any lack of respect from anybody, and I 
still do my job in the way that anyone would. I don't have any particular female way of doing business because it's not that's not relevant at all. Um, and I just do it the way I do it, and and it works well. Today, there's an extra responsibility. Debbie's presiding over a gun salute for the Prince of Wales's birthday. Oh, it's very special. That's what really gives it the edge. Um, it's a huge privilege, this job, um, to be able to not only be part of the tower, but to then be part in showcasing the tower and keeping those stories alive. And that's the key thing with the ceremonial aspect. We want the public, we want society to see the traditions are still kept and to be part of that, that's quite special. So uh, yes, I very much enjoy that part of the job. <laughs> there was a huge debate when I um, when I joined as to what were they going to dress me in because as a tower officer um, and I was the first female, that's the first thing, there had been naval officers at the tower before but not that would wear this ceremonial uniform. To give it a little bit of naval um, flavour because I wanted to retain that, I insisted that I be allowed to carry a naval sword. No one challenged that, so I do. And I also, on the bicorn hat, there is a little button at the side that um, usually an army officer would have their regimental crest on the button, so I have a naval button. Now, no one can see that unless they move the feathers to one side, but I know it's there. And that's what gives it a little bit of special edge for me. It's a very proud uniform. It's, it's, a, it's very heavy and it's, and it's a bit cumbersome to get on, but once you're in it, you feel a million dollars, you really do. Morning, Mum. Debbie heads to the Queen's House to greet the soldiers of the Honourable Artillery Company. They'll fire the 62 rounds for today's Royal Salute. Good morning, nice to see you again. You? Hello, Steve, how are you? Nice to see you again. How are you? I'm well. Hello, gentlemen. Well, a lot easier, isn't it? Traffic light, traffic light, Nice to see you. The Queen's House is off limits to regular visitors, but the VIPs are ushered straight through. Yeah. You're on the whiskey. You're on the whiskey. Nat. Cheers. Happy birthday, Prince of Wales. Yeah. He's my favourite. Yeah. yeah. Suitably refreshed, it's time for the gun salute. All royal salutes consist of 21 rounds. No, no, correct. Correct. This increases to 41 if the guns are fired from a royal park or residence. Uniquely, at the Tower of London, 62 rounds are fired on royal occasions. The extra 21 shots symbolise the loyalty of the citizens of the City of London to the monarch. It is awesome. It really is. I, uh, the first time I did it was for the Queen's birthday earlier in the year, and it's a very proud moment. Even though you don't actually physically do anything, we, I'm just standing there, but I'm representing the Tower. Um, in my ceremonial uniform, and it's something that, you know, it's a bit of a fairy tale, really. I, you know, it is a wonderful feeling to be part of that. And, and I've spent all my life in that kind of environment with my time in the Navy, so I, I feel connected, and, and to be able to represent this iconic, historic, you know, royal palace um, is even more special. Mm -hmm.